In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the Elementary OS App Center on Ubuntu or Ubuntu derivatives or some of the Debian based systems. Now, if you're a new user to Linux, this is great because you're just finding software by a visual icon and click of a button installing it on your system. And if you want to remove it, you go back to the App Center and you can remove it. So there's no opening the terminals. Now, the first time you install this, you'll be using the terminal, but from then on, you won't. Now, before I actually show you about the App Center, let me show you how to install it. Now, I forgot to minimize it on my taskbar, but no problem. Let me open up a Google Chromium and once it loads I can look into my history folder and I can go to the App Center where I had it previously open. Now here is what the App Center looks like the first time you put it on your system, the first time you open it. It's organized into categories which you click a category. It'll look across the internet for additional software within that category you can scroll up and down but let me take a look at what the App Center is. The App Center is an app store for the elementary OS operating system which is a Linux operating system so if you're a Windows or Mac system user then this video is not really for you unless you're installing a Linux or Ubuntu or any of the Ubuntu derivatives in a virtual machine and would like to install the App Center within that Linux operating system. So the first time you install it, you're going to open up the terminal and you're going to copy and paste. And I know a lot of times some people say that it's not great to copy and paste things from a website, but all this is doing is just adding a PPA so that it can actually install it on your system. So copy and paste that into your terminal, press the enter return key, put in your password. When it's finished, update your repositories to make sure that it's pulling it from the PPA so you get the most current version. And then you go sudo apt install app center or you can simply right click copy and paste that and it will install it on your uh, system. If you'd like to know a little bit more about the PPA, you click the stable version here. And that way that you're not just installing something without getting a little knowledge behind it. This explains a little bit more about the PPA. There's the App Center and the version that goes along with it and the creator of it. So that's a little more information. If you decide you later you don't want it, you can remove the PPA by copy and pasting that. Then you can copy and paste to remove the App Center and any stray files left behind. You can clean them up by right clicking and saying sudo apt auto clean and auto remove to remove any files left behind. Now if you'd like to look at a little bit more information about the App Center you can click here and this these are applications you'll find within the App Center so if you want to before you install it look over it to see if you like some of these. Now they will occasionally change here these are 19, 119 uh, curated apps within the App Center then you can go down here which are 114 legacy apps that used to be in the App Center that if you click on to an icon it will give you a description where you can still find ways of installing it on your system. Now most of these apps like Badger you can click to download them as a flat pack if you have it installed on your system set up as flat packs and you can install them from the website but not every application is that way like I click on agenda there's no install as flat pack but the agenda you can install it from the App Center so that's a way that you can look decide whether or not you want to install it by looking at some of the applications you do find on the website. And as you can see here it's broken up into categories. You can click the little settings icon in the corner and choose to run automatic updates or you can say check for updates by holding down the control R and it will check for updates. And as it's updating you'll see a little icon twirling around and it will take a while and it will refresh your screen. Now as you can see here this is the way that it will be laid out. You click on an icon and it will give you a description and ways to install it on your system. If you've already got something like annotator that I've reviewed in the past that's already installed you can uninstall it by clicking the uninstall button or the open button to open it up. There's different categories that you can find software for a lot of things. And here's what I wanted to show you before I close out the, the web browser or minimize it and actually show you the application. The time I was making this web page, which was a few days ago, as you can see here, it runs in the background and it will install in the background so that it will run in the background as you, each time you open it, it will be fast. But if you've got an older system with, with not much RAM, now I have 8 gigabyte of RAM, so with running that it was not even quite up to 2, but since I'm running simple screen recorder when I open it, it will be closer to halfway point. But if you're someone low on RAM, you can remove this from starting up each time by going into your startup application preferences, check the show hidden files, and uncheck the App Center, hit close and reboot your system, and it will not be loading in your background. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let me go up here to my applications. I have a Conkey manager installed, and this is one of my Conkeys here, which is the Gotham. But if I put chose to display the process panel, 
as you can see here, simple screen recorder is the most thing that's using up memory. And then it says Chrome, but this is on Google Chromium running down here. And then Shutter runs in the background, which is here is so my screenshot tool. So let's actually open up the App Center. When I go to Administration and choose on the App Center, you'll see in a moment it will load here and it'll be close to 500. As you can see here, well, it's not now. 500 it's around 399 close to 400 megabytes but for someone that's using or has a low amount of memory that's something you might be concerned about you can go to the installed and as you can see here these are installed packages that can be removed with the elementary OS so if I wanted to remove spice up you can click spice up you can choose to open the program or you can uninstall it by clicking here so it's like a add remove programs within Windows but within here you get a description of it just like if you're looking up software so these are the installed packages as you can see here I can choose to turn on automatic updates but since I don't have this running automatically I ch uncheck that if I want to check for updates I can hit the shortcut keys control R to check for updates as you can see here it's organized by buttons large buttons so if I wanted to go let's say to video I go to the video as you can see here it's looking for all the video files uh, programs that you can install here and there's lots and lots of choices that you can install on your system so let's say for example that I wanted to install the clapper or if I don't know what clapper is I can click on it when I click on the application it'll take a moment to get the uh, screenshot image and as you can see here you can scroll through them using the scroll button on your mouse or you can click on the little uh, arrows as you can see here it's it's a video player it's called the clapper it gives you an image it gives you a description and it gives you about the home page help and send some feedback if you're having trouble with it you can choose to install it within flat hub or system wide on your system and either way when you're installing it system wide it'll probably ask you for your password and then either way it should ask you for your password but when you install it here by clicking free with flat hub it will just install it as the current user but when you say system wide each person that logs on uh, because you're using your administrative password will have access to the software so since it's not installed on the system it's not going to say uninstall and open it will have free where you can install it and it shows you how much system space it will take up which will be 33 megabytes to go back to your original categories you just keep pressing up here and it keeps like the back button if you press it again it'll take you back home so for each category like finance it takes a moment to populate to bring up all the individual software let's say for example I wanted to look up home bank I click the home bank as you can see here you can install it for the current user or for system wide if I just want the current user for banking information I don't want others to access it in their account then I would just install it straight from flat hub and if it's not installed on the system you'll be able to install it by here so these are ways that you can install software from the elementary app center on an Ubuntu or Ubuntu Debian system now before I actually uh, shut the video off let me show you how you can remove it go to your control center from the startup that is when your control center opens up and I know different Linux versions has different ways of categorizing things in the software center or control center I scroll down to personal hit startup applications make sure the show hidden is checked as you can see here app center since they're categorized in alphabetical order is at the top I uncheck it hit close close out all my dialog boxes and browsers and things running in the background I reboot and then elementary app center will not be loaded each time you load your system now when I close this out you'll see in a moment it will free itself from memory so by unchecking it running in the background when you close it out it's not going to still be running in the background it will close out freeing up memory so hopefully this video has been helpful to you especially if you are new to Linux and don't like installing software by using the terminal every time it gives you another option for installing things by a graphical user interface hopefully this video has been helpful to someone and have a great day